All right, this is gonna be a weekend update, and I haven't done any for a while because I've been trying to figure out how to do and what to do for weekend updates. But uh, I think what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna talk about the Lewiston Lower Branch of my railroad. But first we have Doug. Doug hasn't been on the videos in a while, but Doug, hey Doug, look up. Doug's gonna graciously sit here for a minute and look up and tell us what a great guy he is and how much fun he has, and he's expecting something from me, and he will get something when I get done with this. Anyway, thanks Doug. And then here comes Nosy, Nosiness. Hey Nosy. All right, so on my railroad, we have uh, various portions of the lower road, and the first one we're going to talk about in this video here is Lewiston Lower. The Lewiston Lower was a branch that came off of Brunswick, and right now you see here the East Brunswick Yard area, and then there's a Y right here, and this Y actually exists on this portion of the main central lower road, and that Y is the Y that goes out to Lewiston Lower Branch. And on my layout, it actually loops around behind the helix, which is what this structure right here is. So there's the helix, which so goes from the upper level to the lower level, or vice versa, and also goes from the staging to the upper level, or from the upper level to the staging, depending on which way you come into the helix. So the Lewiston Lower Branch has uh, its own dedicated train at least in the 1970s, when I go back in the 50s, we actually have more than one dedicated train. We have like a mixed train and stuff, but uh, it comes out from behind the helix here. And then we have uh, a street here in Brunswick, which I don't remember the name right at the moment, but anyway, that street's gonna have some homes along it. Then we've got this crossing of the Androscoggin River. river. And uh, this is pretty close to the actual size of the real bridge here. I actually wanted that to be a scenic element when you came down off the stairs. Still has some scenery here. Got to put a mirror behind on that road there, which is Route 1, and then do up this area right here. But uh, So we come down here, we go across the Androscoggin, and in real life there are a couple of homes up in this area. I'm just going to show one. And in real life there actually was a road that went underneath this bridge across, which I chose not to put in here at this time. But uh, And today it's not there, but it, the abutments are still showing where you could have gone across. And it was actually a one-way drive under the bridge for the car. Then we get a little farther down the line and we go underneath uh, Interstate 295. And I've started got a lot of work on that, but I still got to do the stripes and the weathering and stuff like that. And there's a whole lot of trees that need to go in here that I haven't added in. And you come down behind and this is the Pajeepscot paper mill. And we'll talk about that here in a moment, but on the upper part here, we have the line coming in here. And then we have the siding for Lisbon Falls. And at Lisbon Falls, we had the Lisbon Falls Chase Station, which was in pretty bad shape by this time. And there was a freight house, but that freight house by this time in the 1970s was used as a storage owned by somebody other than the railroad. And there's a passing siding here. This passing siding is used for holding uh, the train here while the switchers on this particular road will come down here. I'm trying to go slow here so I don't make everybody dizzy to the line that goes down to the Peachepscott paper mill. And this line actually goes down. It does have a runaround track just before you get to the mill. And then you have the mill tracks. I've got most of the tracks in here. There's actually two tracks in between the buildings there, but uh, space compression, I could only put one in. And the other interesting thing I did with this is this is actually 180 degrees out from the actual track arrangement because of the way I had to run the layout around the house. But in the mail, you've got four loading doors here. You had the main office built, and this is scratch built from a picture in Main Central uh, in color volume one. And it's just reversed from the actual picture in the book. So again, everything on this mill is like it is on a good portion of the actual mill. It's just rotated 180 degrees out from the way it was there. So that building was scratch built and then we have this structure here which is kit bash scratch built as a mix of that and then we have this structure here which is a kit bash of uh, two kits put together to make the uh, main mill building. Uh, chemical loading and stuff like that. There's a pulp wood conveyor and then the rest of the mill where you had the uh, digester and stuff like that would be out here in the aisle. But this job is uh, usually has about four or five cars or more. They get switched out during a run out here to Lewiston Lower. 
So we come around here and then uh, one thing I've done recently is the other thing I had was a uh, board mill and I used to have it running all the way out this wall out to almost into that wall out here. I've actually cut it back and brought it closer in here because it was really hard to switch when everything was out underneath the upper level deck here. So this will make it much easier for operators to switch it and they'll be uh, basically flat cars with a uh, bulkhead flats with a wall board to come out of this mill and then wood chips and chemicals and stuff on that dump track right there and then it'll be a whole building here. And eventually what I plan on doing is having the fold down table here and the dispatcher and his phone and all that set up be right here that the dispatch the uh, railroad during an operating session. Now this little section here is removable, but uh, it's not designed to be removed easily. It's just something removable. I really have to get a, something in here because I have a kitchen and if I need to get the stove or refrigerator or something like that past here, I actually have to pull this all out to get that through here. So you come across that drop out or that lift out and then you come into the what's the, there was a uh, plastics plant on Lewis and Lower, it was actually at Crowley's, but I've actually pushed it closer up to Lewis and Lower itself. And, and this is that plastics plant, and it gets coppers with plastic pellets and makes plastic uh, irrigation parts and stuff. And I've actually named it after a friend named Fred Simpson, who was a good friend of mine in high school, Simpson Plastics. And as you can see on the outside here, I've got the name of the industries as you come along here. Now we got the LePage Bakery, and I got the LePage Bakery number two because that's where that Rio Grande car is. That would be bulk flour, bulk sugar, and stuff like that. We're getting into the Lewis and Lumber itself, there where the tracks ran uh, down inside mill buildings, stuff like that. So this on the outside would be a building that I have yet to put in here. And what I think I'm going to do is make the building removable. So when I want to take photographs and stuff like that, I'll put the building in. But when I have operating sessions, I'll leave the building out because it just makes it really difficult for operators to reach behind the building. The other place I have here is Cedar Street Yard, which is a uh, <clears throat> three-track yard where uh, materials were loaded and offloaded, kind of like multiple team tracks. And that actually was on Cedar, and it was called Cedar Street Yard, and actually in Lewis and Lower. We have a couple of the cross streets here. We have Roy Brothers, which I have right here on this uh, outboard side or the, the, the aisle side. Roy Brothers is really off of a uh, very long uh, tail track that went up and made a basically a horseshoe curve back into the buildings. But uh, again, I don't have the room to put that, but I will put Roy Brothers here because they did take a lot of uh, cars for uh, paper products. Across another street here with some town buildings. And then we come into, this is all Bates Mill buildings from here on down into the rest of the yard area right here. So that's a Bates Mill building. That's a powerhouse for all these mill buildings. And then we have uh, another part of the building right here. So this is a canal. These uh, buildings all took water from the Androscoggin River just past this area right here. There was falls, and so this water ran down a canal behind these buildings, which would be out here in the aisle. And there were several of these canals where the water would go through turbines to run the machinery and the mills and then pass through that canal out to the Androscoggin River, which would be on the other side of all these buildings up against that wall. And uh, actually on the other side of the wall in real life. But the other thing about this is that this little yard here is almost to scale for the actual yard in Lewiston Lower. So it was a very small yard. You get about four or five cars in there and a caboose and then an engine and then they would basically pull their train from there and then they also took the old freight station and turned it into a, a uh, engine house and that's what I've depicted there. So that's the Lewiston Lower branch. It, also has a Lewiston Lower switcher which does operate and service these industries down here in the yard and that's why the engine house is there either a 44 tonner or an Alco switcher and you see the Alco switcher down there I think I got 303 sitting in here right now yep so 303 is a Lewiston Lower switcher right now and then we have the road freights come in usually with a GP7 or two and that's the Lewiston Lower branch and that's the weekend update that's a long one but couple weeks since I've done this. We'll do some more portions of the layout and what everything is on them as we go down the next couple of weeks.